everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up all the books that I read in June and some of the books that I read in early July that I want to return to the library. First book that I have to talk about is Jennifer Chan is Not Alone by Tay Keller. This is a new book by the author that wrote When You Trap a Tiger, which is a middle grade book that I love so much. I didn't feel as attached to this book. I ended up giving it just three stars because I really enjoyed the point of the book. I do think it's commendable, the inspiration for the story and where it came from, but this was really not what I was wanting and anticipating, especially with the way that this book is described. It's described as this main character, Jennifer Chan, and her really big devotion into like aliens and thinking and believing that aliens exist. And she moves to this new town and she doesn't really care how other kids see her. And that's when you meet her neighbor who lives across from her, Mallory. And Mallory is really the central point of this book. We follow Mallory a lot as they're trying to find Jennifer Chan as she goes missing. It's really mostly a book about bullying. It's a book about power dynamics when it comes to being popular in middle school. It's a book about fitting in and molding yourself so that other people see you in a particular light. One trope that this book has that really bothers me in fiction is when you are kind of told something at the beginning of the story and it's kind of like the whole story is relying on this pivotal moment but you are not told what the moment is until the end of the book. So as you're reading the whole book you're kind of always hinted at that this happened and this changed the course of everything but you're not told what that is until the end of the story and it was predictable it wasn't revelatory and I feel like it's way more interesting to kind of see that at the front and then see kind of what happens as a, as a result of that and how that's fixed um, versus like just wallowing in this bad thing that you did for a long period of time until it's revealed at the end that it was a bad thing that you did. Another thing that I really missed about When You Trap a Tiger as I was reading this is the real lack of family and like older grown-ups in the story. When you are in middle school and you're kind of in this group of you know popular kids or you want to be part of the popular kids, you're not really thinking about your parents. I really love family stories in middle grade books and I wish so much that there was a lot more of the alien stuff in here and a lot more of Jennifer Chan in here and her quirkiness instead of following Mallory as much. After that I read uh, Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jawad and this book is a cancer memoir and the author is tracing how she found out that she had cancer and all that has happened in the years after that. Even more so if you follow her on Instagram too, she's still actively talking about it online. I feel like this book was something that I really needed because I had been reading a lot of nonfiction that I was kind of like eh about and I didn't love this five star love it like a lot of people have rated this on Goodreads but I did really really enjoy it and I gave it four stars. This is a mix between different things too and I like some things more than others. For example I really loved her tracing like why she left the US and went to move abroad. I loved her meeting her first relationship and seeing that relationship really develop. You also follow just the way that she sees her own body as a woman the way that she sees like her fertility the way that she sees you know the way that she appears and also like the mental battles that she is going through you know thinking of like why did this happen to me i also really love the parts in here where her family were really involved her mom and dad are very very involved there is a lot of sadness in this book there's a lot of things where she is sabotaging herself or she is saying and doing things because she is angry and that's totally understandable but i think she is very honest about her experience and she is not really hiding parts that are ugly about the way that she acted at times. I didn't like as much in this book maybe the last third or the last fourth where we are more focusing on this road trip as you can see kind of from the cover and this road trip that she takes across the United States to visit different people that she met because of her cancer journey, people she met at hospital wards or that she met as a result of some of the writing that she did for the New York Times. Some of those stories were fascinating but I just feel like this book lost steam when it was just her traversing through the United States and meeting these people. It wasn't as compelling as like the internal monologue that she was having with herself but overall I really did love this book and I definitely recommend it. It's a great nonfiction pick. It's a great um, book for people who love memoirs. After that I read Cold by Mariko Tamaki. I was really excited about this book and I ended up rating it three stars. Like I feel like I needed a little bit more work. I needed a little bit more um, meaning behind things that were happening in the story. I feel like if a few different things were changed, the point of the story would have made a lot more sense, like the plot of the story would have made a lot more sense. In this book we are following a main character who is understanding this 
murder that happened in her town and then it alternates chapters between her point of view and the point of view of the person who was murdered who is a, a young teen boy you're seeing his perspective from his ghost so it's him like going around the town and seeing how people are investigating his murder those chapters were really awesome it was really fascinating to be kind of like a fly on the wall as he's watching the investigators living their own lives and then also just like being around the town and seeing how his family is reacting i didn't so much understand the point of view of the main character the main girl character in the story she's dealing with a lot of her own things understanding like her brother understanding her family and understanding her own sexual identity especially this attraction that she has to her best friend as you finally understand what caused this murder it could have been tied a little bit better together there was also kind of hints at another queer story having to do with the main teen boy that was murdered i wish that maybe the whole book had been from the ghost perspective my main reason for reading this is because i love mariko tamaki but maybe I like her graphic novels more than I like her actual fiction work. Then I read a graphic memoir called So Much for Love by Sophie Lambda. This is what it looks like on the inside. I think I like the art but I didn't love it. So this book is a look into the main author illustrator's life. Sophie Lambda is a French illustrator author who wrote this book about her experience with a very taxing psychological abusive relationship. It's not a relationship that was ever uh, violent in the sense of like physical violence but it was definitely very psychologically mentally taxing for her life. It's the ups and downs of this relationship and how the way that he talked to her and the way that he dealt with conflicts that they had in this relationship made her second guess herself. She uses a lot of humor to interject. I felt like it was a little bit off-putting and unnecessary. It didn't really fit the seriousness of the story. She does this by using like a teddy bear and the teddy bear comes up over and over again kind of like as a fourth wall interjection of her other thoughts that are happening in her head. It was a little crude and weird and I didn't feel like it fit the story very well. She also made a lot of asides about like the length of the story and how long it needed to be according to the publisher and some of like the humorous things I feel like didn't land with me and then the last like third to last fourth of the book is all like an inside guide of how these types of people exist what kinds of things that they do that psychologists uh, have researched kind of like red flags to look for if you're finding yourself in a relationship where you're kind of questioning if this person is a toxic partner to have it was like the story was over and then now we were going into this research into what toxic partners are like and it would have been much more productive to have that be part of the story where she was having a more internal monologue and narrating this kind of like research that she has done about toxic partners that would have been a lot more successful if she was really using that while we were learning about her own personal journey and personal story with this man after that i read a really disappointing book i think i ended up giving it two stars this is mercy street by jennifer haig i've heard really good things about this author i've never read any of her books all of the negative reviews that I was reading about this book were saying that they couldn't really fit this author's previous works to this one and that it didn't seem in line with her other works. I've never read her books before so I didn't have that hindsight to compare it to but for me this book was really really unnecessary. The characters that we're following in the story I feel like are frustrating to read from their point of views. This book focuses on an abortion clinic that is on Mercy Street. So we're following a person named Claudia who works at this abortion clinic and honestly if her point of view was not in this book I would have rated this book one star. Uh, there are three other male characters. One of these men that we're following is kind of the one that ties them all together. He's the town like weed dealer. The other person that we're following is someone that's involved with the church and then the third male character that we're following is kind of like shit poster doxer online who believes that abortion is murder. The main religious guy gets involved with the online guy. He is kind of lost and is trying to find community and he finds it with this horrible man online named Victor. Yeah, it's very um, tiring to read from these male points of view when it comes to women's bodily autonomy. It was just like, what is the point of this story? Because I felt like the points of view from these male characters definitely outweighed the point of view of Claudia, the main woman character in this book. It's kind of like that is real life and there are people doing this in real life, but why would I read a fiction book about it when I could read a nonfiction book where it's at least real and true? I really like those parts with Claudia and seeing the day-to-day -day life of the clinic and the women that she was talking to who were seeking care, but all the other main characters in the story, no. After that, I read Harley Rustad's Lost in the Valley of Death, a story of obsession and danger in the Himalayas. This book 
was an interesting one. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. I liked the audiobook experience of this. It was very much like a survival and like an outdoorsy kind of book. There's kind of a mystery involved in this, which was also interesting. I think the only thing about this book is that the main subject that we are following in the story, Justin Alexander Shetler, he was hard to connect with and he was not relatable. That might have been because this book is written by someone who is a journalist and is not like a personal friend who didn't quite know Justin Alexander very very well. I understood that he was kind of being pulled in many directions of feeling like does he want to just be off the grid and like on a mountain somewhere in a cave somewhere or does he want to live like a normal life where you're going to a nine-to-five work job having a house that kind of a thing. Does he not want to talk to anyone? Does he want to like completely live without any connection to anyone or does he want to have a family and a girlfriend and people who are surrounding him? I feel like he was very much indecisive and had a hard life and didn't really know himself and so he tried to find himself by going into the Parvati Valley in India near the Himalayas and he wanted to live off the land, he wanted to live in a cave and he also wanted to spiritually find himself by meeting a sadhu. Sadhus are spiritual people who are guiding others um, in their spiritual journey, but a lot of them are not legit it seems like and a lot of the things that really is focused on in this book that I found fascinating was seeing how many people want to go to foreign countries to live off the land and to find themselves spiritually. A lot of the book is focused on like why people are drawn to India and the history of that and also the spiritual guidance that is found there with the sadhus as well as the hashish, I think it's what it's called, basically like the marijuana strains that are found there and also like how many people have been lost in these areas, how difficult it is to find them because it's very remote the police that are there are not you know like they don't have all of the resources to be able to find people who are missing so that was really really fascinating and seeing kind of like the history of foreigners going to India and what it is that they're trying to seek there and what it is that they actually find there not so much I think the story of Justin Alexander who is still missing hasn't been found but is presumed dead at this point quite interesting especially if you'd like John Krakauer books or books that are about survival and being outdoors. Then I read a book I don't have and it's Save It For Later, Promises Parenthood and the Urgency of Protest by Nate Powell who is one of the illustrators from the March series. This book is really a call to action. It's a book about how it is to parent children in this day and age and how to talk to kids about symbols that they see in everyday life, how to talk to kids about the rise of fascism in the United States and the rise of anti-democracy. I really really enjoyed this book. This book is the book I read after we found out about the Roe v. Wade overturning. It really was the thing that I needed to read that weekend. It really lifted my spirits and made me feel a little bit more optimistic about what a single person can do and about how regardless of what is happening um, you can't ever give up and you can't ever just feel defeated. There's a John Lewis quote about, let me find you the exact quote so I don't misquote it because I feel like it's too perfect. The quote is, ours is a struggle of a lifetime or maybe even many lifetimes. That is the kind of belief that I'm taking on in life. Yeah, he talks about how it is that he is talking about this moment with his young children. I don't have any children but I can imagine how difficult that conversation would be to kind of talk to them about how Donald Trump rose to power. The motifs and symbols that we see in everyday life on people's cars, you know, the kind of flags that they decide to fly and what those things mean for when children see those kinds of things to know what that means about the person and how you can trust or ask them of help when you are a child. When to take children to protest and how often or when to protest, especially when you're living in a very very red area, which Nate Powell is. So I really really enjoyed this collection of graphic essays and this graphic nonfiction work and I do recommend it. I gave it four stars. I've been reading kind of very meh, three star, average, good but not great middle grade books and sadly this is another one. This is Violets Are Blue by Barbara D. Barbara D wrote a book I loved called Maybe He Just Likes You and I was really excited about this book. It came out late last year but the audiobook wasn't released until like the middle of this year so I didn't read it until now. This follows a main character whose family is divorcing and her dad is moving away and is has a new wife with new kids coming on the way and her mother is having a really hard time 
dealing with that separation. She stays living with her mother and she starts to be really interested in special effects makeup. She joins a theater production um, to work on the makeup for the people there. She watches a YouTuber who's really into it. It's her learning about herself through this new hobby that she has and also understanding like what's happening to the grown-ups in her life. I really like that the dad and stepmother in the story were not the bad guys. I feel like that would have been a really easy way to deal with this situation. This is one of those books where like you know what's happening and there are a lot of things that are explained like subliminally that you know mean something but maybe as an upper middle grade reader you're reading this and those things are not like super super clear. This book did another thing that I also don't love particularly and that's when everything's kind of wrapped up in a neat little bow. I think it would have been way more fascinating if we had seen what this new situation, this new life would have been like after the fact instead of the way that it ended where it was kind of just like everything's gonna be fine. That is something that is uplifting about middle grade stories but I feel like it would have been a lot more fascinating to just see the struggles through the whole book versus like knowing that it happened at the end and then everything being fine as the book closed. I gave it three stars. I sound like a broken record today. The next book that I read is Uncanny Valley, a memoir, and this was a very anticipated read for me. I ended up giving it three and a half stars because there were some things that I really, really liked about this book, especially like the first, I don't know, 50%. Then I felt like the book was very, very repetitive and the author being really really unhappy in the job that she was in in Silicon Valley knowing that she didn't feel like morally it was the right place to work for her but it took her a while to leave the narrative of it the arc of the story really faltered because we kept going around and around on you know like this thing happened I don't like it and we just kind of went through that same cycle over and over again what I liked about this book is the narration of it I love the author's tone. I loved her voice. I think she's very snarky and condescending but like in a way that is smart and I felt like in general she was relatable like the way that she views these new startups, the way that she views this world of extravagance and this world of CEOs being given like all the power by these venture capitalists. Like I totally get her point of view from that. What I didn't really get is why she stayed in it for so long. She did a lot of customer support. She wasn't really like a technology person or like an engineer behind the scenes. Her experience is different than it would be, I feel like, if you were in the technology aspect of it or in the engineering aspect of it. After I finished this book and I read some reviews, I read that this book was actually an essay first and then it was turned into this long book. And yeah, at times it does feel like we're trying to meet a page count for a normal sized book and there wasn't as much story for it to go on so long. After that, I read chemistry. I really thought that it was going to live up to like Weather by Jenny Offal because it's very sparse and it's also like random little passages that add to each other. I thought that this book was good. I gave it three stars. I really enjoyed the point of view of the main character. I understood where she was coming from. There are some passages in here that are very relatable when it comes to like how being an immigrant and having English be your second language or having parents who have English as a second language affects the way that you speak and the way that you process language. Which, there were other things in here about like expectations parents have of you but I think that this book didn't really hit in the way that I wanted it to and I felt like some of the passages were not as memorable or were not as necessary to add to the full story. I did really like the ending of this so I did enjoy this book but I think you do really have to relate to certain aspects of the story to really enjoy it and I think that's why I liked Weather so much by Jenny Offal because the main character of that is a librarian and is like dealing mentally with the rise of Trump and trying to understand like the society that's happening around her. So a lot of the things that happen in that story were things that like I've seen or I've heard in my own life. For some of these very sparse novels, you really, really have to relate to the main characters. I also read Besties Work It Out and this is by Kayla Miller, Jeffrey Canino, it's illustrated by Christina Liu and it's colored by Damali Beattie. I really enjoyed this story and it was definitely uh, my cup of tea. Contemporary realistic fiction graphic novel middle grade book that I loved with this kind of style artwork that I also really loved. It's just two best friends who are taking care of this house. They're like house sitting and dog sitting for a wealthy woman that goes on a trip. Havoc ensues. Things happen. They break things. They invite people over that they shouldn't have invited over and it's the besties having conflict with each other and then coming back together as best friends. I really, really thought this was super sweet. I loved how this world is really growing. This is from the original 
books by Kayla Miller, the Olive books, and these are two best friends that are part of that series, so now they have their own like spin-off series. It was just a very nice palette cleanser. I loved the conflict resolution, I loved the communication of it, I loved the art. I definitely related to Beth more than Chanda, but I did really enjoy the two friends together and how they came back together. Really sweet and a nice one that I gave four stars. Then I read another book that I really enjoyed that was super quick and short and a graphic novel and that's Lorna by Benji Nates. I did just read and review Benji Nates' Hellphone and that's what inspired me to pick up something else by him. I just love his humor. I think it's so weird and I definitely don't feel like it's for everyone. Very dark humor. It's very like nonsensical. It's very absurd. The main character Lorna is just not okay. She, you know, says she loves cats, she's incredibly awkward, and she won't hesitate to pull a knife on those who displease her. There's a lot of humor in here that's very focused on death, so if that's your cup of tea, your kind of humor, then I think you would enjoy this. But I definitely don't think this is for everyone, and I think you should take into consideration like Benji Nate's style of humor when you consider picking up his work. Two books that I just finished in the last day, one of them is Woman of Light by Kali Fajardo Anstein, and this book is a new release that I was really, really anticipating because I loved her previous book, Sabrina and Corinna. This is an expansive work that focuses on many generations, though it's one generation that is the most focused on, and that is of Luz and Diego and Lizette, basically how their family came to be in Denver in the 1930s. You are mostly following Luz, and she is a person who reads tea leaves, and she is trying to get a job to make ends meet because she lives with her aunt. You're learning more about where Luz came from, why she's with her aunt, where her family is, and also her brother. Diego kind of gets exiled from the town and you start learning like why that is. A lot of this has to do with race and community and like who's in power at the time in Denver. I really loved the descriptions in this story. It's very evocative. I love her writing. I think that she really creates a scene. I really felt like I was there and that's another thing that I love so much about Sabrina and Corinna where you read just a few pages of a story and you felt like you completely knew what was happening. I also really loved kind of some of the ideas that were happening in the story but I think what was troublesome in this book is how many of these threads felt very random and then it really cohesively go together. It's a book where you're led somewhere in the plot but then it kind of fizzles and you go somewhere else instead and that really made this book falter for me. I really wanted to love it more than I did. I ended up giving it three stars. I will definitely pick up more by this author and then last but not least I just finished last night I Cried to Dream Again Trafficking Murder and Deliverance by Sarah Cruzon and Corey Thomas and this is a memoir of a woman who was trafficked into sex when she was 11. I mean like she had her first sexual experiences really really early forced by this man who became someone that was using her for other clients in California in the 90s when she was you know 13 to like 16. The first third of the book really focuses on that grooming aspect of it where you see how this man was really creating this life for her that she couldn't leave after she was treated to candy and ice cream and taken to the mall and things like that. Then she meets this guy and she meets this other man who basically kind of convinced her to kill him. She ends up murdering her abuser and the man that was trafficking her. She ended up going to prison. She was there for 18 years before her sentence was commuted by the governor at the time, which was Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then as of this past week, she was pardoned completely by the current governor, Gavin Newsom. This book was very harrowing. I I think you need to go into it knowing that the first third of it is just really hard to read. She's very traumatized and hurt honestly by all adults around her not just the man that trafficked her but also her mother and then the second and third half of this book is more about what it was like to go to prison and also how she got involved with the human rights watch and people that were really arguing for her release and then what happened when she finally got out what she's doing now which is still fighting for children to not be sentenced to life without parole. I ended up giving this book four stars and I definitely think it's worth your time. I really enjoyed the writing in this. She got through the very conflicting emotions that she had and I feel like it comes through very well that she's very traumatized but also she's very optimistic about the future and that she has goals in mind which is really uplifting obviously because of how hard her life has been. This book was too short and I feel like some things were really glossed over. We didn't spend as much time on certain things as we could have and I feel like that she had to tell because 
I mean, she's gone through so much. So this book is less than 300 pages. This book is 200 pages. It could have been 100 more pages. Yeah, this book ends kind of abruptly and I wish that it was a little bit longer for sure. Those are all the books that I read. I, I DNF two that I'll share with you. One of them is Three Girls from Bronzeville, a uniquely American memoir of race, fate, and sisterhood by Don Turner. I read maybe 50 pages of this and it wasn't really capturing me. It was focusing too much on early childhood and memoirs that focus on early childhood are not as fascinating to me. It's it's kind of hard for me to feel like I understand like a six-year-old child and I'm, I'm way more interested in kind of like 12 and up those memoirs that focus later in childhood I didn't love the writing style either and where it was going so I set it down and then the other book that I DNF'd is this might get awkward by Kara McDowell I DNF'd this maybe 30% of the way through I definitely said I wanted to read something more lighthearted, but it, this was just a bit too much for me the things that were happening I was just like mm-hmm really <laughs> that is all the books that I need to share with you so I hope that you enjoyed this video if you read any of these books let me know down below or if you want to read any of them now that you've heard me talk about about them also let me know down below and I'll see you in my next video bye bye